O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 20. More about housing in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 4, Housing, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 4.4. Important words related to housing. 4.5. Housing laws. 4.6. The lease. 4.7. Staying safe in your home. 4.8. Keeping your home clean. In this dialogue, Sadia and her daughter Miriam sign the lease for their permanent housing. They are currently staying in temporary accommodation. Sadia's sponsor explains the features of the apartment, the lease details, how to stay safe, and how to keep the apartment clean. Sadia and Mariam are in their temporary accommodation, a hotel room. Sadia hangs up her phone and calls to her daughter. Mariam, I have good news. What is it, mother? I just spoke to our sponsor, and he said we are signing the lease for our permanent housing today. Does that mean we can move out of this hotel and move to a place we can settle down? Exactly. Our new permanent housing will be our home. This temporary accommodation we have been staying at since we arrived in Canada is not bad, but we definitely need a home. Our sponsor will show us the place and help us sign the lease today. Can I go with you, Mom, please? Okay, we will all go together. You, me, and your brother, Pablo. Yay, thank you, Mom. I will get ready. Sadia's sponsor drives Sadia, Mariam, and Pablo to their new permanent housing and opens the front door. Here it is. Welcome to your new home. It took us some time to find this home. Both you and I made an effort to look for places, and we were able to find you this rental apartment. Cool. This is where you and your children will live. Once we sign the lease, you can move your baggage from your temporary accommodation. Here's the key to your new home. We will practice opening and locking the door with the key as well. Thank you. This place looks like it has the essentials we need. We are very happy to finally be settling in. Thank you for your help finding this place for us. Wow, I love it. That is great. As of right now, the apartment is empty as you can see. Rented homes in Canada usually come without furniture, except for some electric machines that help with the household work, called appliances. This place has a refrigerator and a stove. They belong to the landlord, not the tenant. You are lucky. This apartment also comes with its own washing machine. Here it is. What is this for? This is a machine that washes your clothes. Later, I will show you how it works. How about we look at the rest of the kitchen? This is the refrigerator, Miriam. What does it do? It keeps food cold, so it will last longer. I see. And I assume that this is the stove over here? Yes, the stove and the oven. You can cook food on the stove, and down here in the oven, you can bake your food. I can show you how to safely use these appliances later. I will help you fill this apartment with some furniture and basic household items, such as beds, tables and chairs, a sofa, pots and pans, dishes, and utensils. You mentioned that the appliances belong to the landlord. What is a landlord? A landlord is the person who owns a place that is rented to others, like your apartment. It is rented to the tenants. Tenants are the people who rent a place to live, like you both. Your mother will sign a document called a lease, which is a written contract between her as a tenant and the landlord. By signing the lease, 
a tenant agrees to certain rules and responsibilities. These are clearly listed in the lease. Here is the lease. Sadia, it is very important to read and understand the lease before you sign it. If you do not understand the language in the lease, make sure to find someone to translate it for you. The information in most leases includes the name of the landlord and the tenant, and the address of your new rental apartment. Is this number here on the lease the amount I need to pay to live here each month? Yes, that is correct. It is your rent, and here is the date you will need to make your payment each month. In the lease, you can see the duration of the lease, including the start date, which is today, and the end date, which is one year from now. And there is a section explaining the utilities. This section explains whether you need to pay for electricity, water, and heating separately, or if these are included in the rent amount. In your case, the utilities are included in the cost of rent. If the tenant or landlord wants to end the lease early... Is it possible to end the lease early? Yes, it is possible to end the rental contract between the landlord and the tenant before the agreed-upon end date, written in the lease. So, for example, your lease is for one year. After one year, you can either choose to renew your lease by notifying your landlord, or you can move somewhere else. But within that year, if you want to move before the end of the lease, or if the landlord wants to rent it to someone else, both of you must respect the conditions outlined in the lease and follow the law. For example, according to your lease, that means you must give three months advance notice if you want to leave before the end date. Both the tenant and the landlord have to respect the law and the agreement settled upon in the lease. Housing laws in Canada outline tenant and landlord rights and responsibilities. They vary in each province and territory. According to housing laws, the tenant is responsible for paying the rent amount in full and on time keeping the interior of the home clean, well-maintained, and safe. Miriam is always so helpful with the cleaning. I can sweep the floors, wipe the tables. Oh, and I brush my teeth every day. <laughs> that is great to hear. I also do vacuuming floors. Wow. How about cleaning the toilet, sink, bathtub, and shower? Sometimes I do those. Sometimes, Mommy. I also like to wash dishes, so I do that. Mom does washing clothing and bedding by putting it in the washing machine. Wow, you really are a big help to your mother. She is. I am very proud of her. It is true. I am amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Another important thing to do is take out the garbage. You separate and take out the garbage and recycling on collection days. We can find out when garbage collection days are for your building. I see. You can reduce the amount of garbage you make by recycling certain items. Wait, I am not familiar with recycling. Can you explain? Sure. In Canada, there is a system where certain containers can be washed or melted down and made into new containers. This makes less garbage for the garbage dumps. This is called recycling. Many cities have recycling programs. There are special bins to put items that can be recycled. What are those bins? What sort of things can be put into the recycling bin? They are containers where you can place used plastic, cans, paper, and glass. Many cities collect these items and repurpose them. It is good to try to reduce the amount of garbage we all produce. We have talked about your responsibilities as a tenant. Now let us talk about your landlord's responsibilities. Okay. While it is your responsibility to keep the inside of the apartment clean by doing things like sweeping and recycling, it is the landlord's responsibility to keep the building safe and in good condition. So, if anything in the building does not work, like if the elevator in the building stops working or the door lock is broken, your landlord should fix these problems. You can contact them about these problems. Is the landlord responsible if something breaks inside the apartment? Yes. If something breaks in your apartment, like if the toilet does not flush, the faucet leaks, or one of the appliances included with the apartment stops working, you can contact the landlord. 
the landlord is responsible for arranging and paying for regular maintenance and repairs. And remember, they must ask permission to enter your apartment to carry out repairs each time. The landlord might hire a person who collects the rent, keeps the building in good condition, and makes sure repairs are done. This other person is called a property manager. Property manager? Exactly. It is also important to know that if you or your family cause any damage, such as breaking a window or breaking a cabinet, you will be responsible for paying for the damage. That is something you would have to discuss with your landlord. It is important to be careful and take care of your apartment, including things like the bathtub and the toilet. For example, it is important to always dispose of sanitary products like pads, tampons, and diapers in the trash bin and not the toilet, because those items can clog the toilet and cause serious plumbing issues. Huh, I see. Good. How do I contact my landlord? We will have to talk to your landlord to find out the contact details. In your lease, it also states that upon signing the lease, you have to pay for the first month of rent plus a security or damage deposit. What does it mean if I have a deposit as part of my lease? When you have a deposit as part of your lease, this means that the landlord will keep a portion of money in case you are unable to pay for rent or damages. The money will be returned to you at the end of the lease if you always pay your rent on time and there are no damages to the apartment. That is reasonable. Is there anything else I should know about renting this apartment? Yes. It is important to know that the landlord also has the right to increase the rent amount, but only with written notice and within certain limits. What do you mean by within certain limits? There are laws that allow the monthly rent to be raised by a certain amount over a certain period of time. What if my landlord does not respect the law? Or I have a question about the law. Is there someone who can help me? If you want to ask a question about the law, the rights you have, or to submit a complaint about housing, you can contact the governing body for housing in your province or territory. You can also ask me, because I am your sponsor and I am here to support you. You can also ask a government-funded organization for help in contacting the governing body. But remember, as a tenant, you must respect the building's rules and city bylaws, such as noise levels, to respect the other tenants who may live in the building. It is important to respect your fellow tenants and foster a good relationship. That will not be a problem for us. But what if our neighbors are the noisy ones? Then you should contact the landlord, but I have not heard any complaints from any other tenants in this building so far. Everyone seems to like living here. This neighborhood is quiet and residential. I am very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us go over some of the tips for staying safe in your home. Sure. It is important to remember to always lock doors. Here is the key. Thank you. After you sign your lease, we can practice locking and unlocking your front door. Okay. Oh, and if you own jewelry and other valuable items, make sure you keep them somewhere safe, like in a locked safety box. Do not allow people that you do not know inside your apartment. What if we see some suspicious people lurking around outside? What do we do? You can call the police to report the situation. I recommend getting to know your neighbors, so you have an added layer of security that you can rely on in case of an emergency but also remember to respect their privacy. What should we do if there is an emergency that the neighbors cannot help with? What do you mean by an emergency? What if the building was on fire? I have seen that on TV and it looks really scary. Every apartment has certain safety precautions to keep you safe in case of a fire. Do you see that white round thing up here on the ceiling? Yes. That is a smoke detector. If there is a fire in your apartment or in the building, it makes a very loud sound. You should test smoke detectors regularly and know where emergency exits are. If you cook something with a lot of smoke, the smoke may set off the device. If that happens, you will have to open your windows, 
air out your apartment, and turn off the alarm. If there is a fire, either in your apartment or in someone else's apartment, the alarm will detect the smoke, and you will have to quickly evacuate the building. That is why you must know where the emergency exits are. That is very good to know. I can also show you how to safely use your electric stove and other appliances in order to prevent accidents in your home. I strongly recommend that you buy tenant insurance. Tenant insurance will pay for damages caused in case of unexpected problems, like theft, damage, or fire. Wow! This is a lot of new information to absorb. I think I may have to write some of this down. Do not worry. Here are a few guides to help you out. You can also look at Unit 4 of your Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. It has more information and drawings to make it easy to understand. I see. I will have a look at Unit 4 in the Participant Workbook. Shall we go see the landlord and sign the lease now? Yes. Thank you. Great. Please remind me to show you how to lock the door after we sign the lease. Sure thing. End of Dialogue Unit